say some things. I don't like Andy's a clown, I don't like him. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, Luke Reynolds here, new strongman coach at Raw Barbell Club. I'm a professional strongman competitor. I've been competing for 13 years, almost 14 years now, um, and stone lifting is my real forte. I've lifted stones all over the planet, um, in Scotland, Norway, Portugal, uh, and all over Australia. And I'm here to teach you in this series. We're gonna do a bunch of stone lifting. We'll talk about the history. Uh, we'll talk about the technique. We'll talk about five phases of stone lifting. So I hope you enjoy and let's get on with it. Okay guys, so first let's talk about the history of stone lifting. Stone lifting is probably one of the oldest uh, strength disciplines in the world. It's been utilized from, by everybody from the Greeks, Romans, Vikings, uh, Japanese, uh, American Indians, and all of your Scandinavian cultures throughout history to test the prowess of a warrior. Um, and usually in places like Scotland and up north, it was utilized as a, a coming of age test for a young man um, before he became a warrior as part of his clan. Your modern stones that we know here are your Atlas stones. These are the, the common ones that you'll see at World's Strongest Man. They've been made famous by the World's Strongest Man contest, but they've only been around since the World's Strongest Man contest has been in existence. So only about 40 years. Before that, it was all about natural stones, and that's what your traditional stone lifting is. That's what you find in your ancient cultures. That's what you'll find at Japanese shrines. That's what you'll find in paddocks and locations all over Scotland, all over Norway, all over Denmark. These are your traditional stones, because back then, they didn't have molds where you could make beautiful, perfectly round concrete stones. And they didn't bother to take pieces of granite or sandstone and carve a perfectly round stone for a test. They would find pieces of sandstone or granite or basalt in paddocks or on mountain sides or in their natural environment and each one of those would provide an individual challenge and would become known in that location it, it would become the challenge stone for either that clan or that location so in scotland you have varying stones in different locations weighing from down around 80 kilos all the way up to the, some real monsters that are up near 180 to 200 kilograms so firstly, you would start from the ground up and the first stage would be putting wind under the stone it's known as, and that would simply be breaking the stone off the ground. Just, just so you can get some light and some wind under that stone. The next step would be into the lap um, where you could have it on your legs. The third would be a full extension where you stand up and the stone is held against your chest in your arms and you're standing upright. Number four is to take the stone onto the shoulder and have complete control of it, pull your other arm away. And that would be called shoulder in a stone. And then finally, fifth stage, pressing the stone overhead. So as you can imagine, say an 80 kilo to 100 kilo stone is possible to put overhead, even up to 120 for some real freaks out there. When you start talking about stones are 150, 60, 70, 80 kilos, putting them overhead, even for the top athletes in the world is basically an impossible task. So you might see some of those stones come to the chest or you might see them taken to the shoulder. Okay guys, the last thing I wanna talk about today with stone lifting is two things called chalk and tacky. Chalk is a common one. You'll, any lifter in any gym anywhere would generally be familiar with it. It's a magnesium based product, that, that white stuff we put on our arms and on our hands um, to make sure we wick away sweat and can hang on to the lifts on bars. And the second one I wanna talk about is tacky. So that's a tree resin based product. It's very sticky. It's similar to the tack that baseball throwers and pitchers will use on their hands to grip the ball. We use it, it's generally a thicker version of that product and we will use it to grip stones. If you look over here, you'll see we have plain concrete stones here and then the stand or submit ones here are sealed uh, with like a, a similar to a concrete type substance. And that means they're a very slick, very smooth finish on there, which is great because it also helps your stones last, but it also makes them very difficult to lift without tacky. But these stones are designed for world records. With your concrete stone, and it is a good idea to train like this, um, you mainly want to use chalk to begin with. You just need nice dry arms. It allows you to develop a really good strength, allows you to work on those technique pointers before you progress on to using something like a tacky, uh, which you would probably use to practice before you go into a competition setting where everyone's gonna be using tacky and it is allowed in the sport, so you'd be crazy not to. Okay guys, that's it for stone lifting today. If you enjoyed this content, give us a like, follow, subscribe on YouTube. Um, and if you wanna learn more about stone lifting and you wanna learn some more in person, you can come on down to Raw Barbell. We're happy to teach you in person and do some coaching. Uh, or if you wanna hit us up, we're happy to discuss. And I'll uh, catch you in the next video.